This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Three shot and killed, one injured in New Lincoln Avenue attack. Four men were shot three fatally by unknown assailants on New Lincoln Avenue, Kingston 5 on Friday. They are 55-year-old Rudolph McBean and 41-year-old Donville Charlton, both of Lincoln Crescent, Kingston 5, as well as 38-year-old Barrington Phillips, a contractor of Berwick Road, Kingston 13. The Major Investigations Division has disclosed that about 7.20 p.m., McBean, Charlton, Phillips and the other man were among a group of people purchasing meals when they were pounced upon by gunmen traveling in a Mazda motor car. The gunmen opened the fire hitting the four men. The police were alerted and the men were taken to hospital where McBean, Charlton and the Phillips were pronounced dead and the other man was admitted for treatment. Jamaican gets three years in prison for scamming elderly Americans. The United States Department of Justice says a Jamaican man was sentenced on Friday to three years in prison for conspiring to run a Jamaica-based lottery scam that targeted elderly American consumers. According to court documents, Greg Warren Clark, 30, from Montego Bay, conspired to operate a fraudulent lottery scheme. From September 2013 through to August 2015, the DOJ said Clark worked with co-conspirators, including Claude Anthony Shaw, in a scheme to defraud in which victims were called and falsely told that they had won over U.S. $1 million in a lottery and they needed to pay fees or taxes to claim their winnings. Victims were instructed to send their money through wire transfers or the mail to Shaw and other individuals, the DOJ said. As part of the conspiracy, it said Clark and Shaw discussed over the phone and through cell phone text messages, plans to receive victims' money. At Clark's direction, Shaw received the money from victims through wire transfers and the mail, said the DOJ, adding that Clark and Shaw discussed arrangements for victims to send the money to other individuals with whom Shaw worked. Clark then instructed Shaw to send the victims' money to Clark in Jamaica, usually through wire transfers. However, victims who sent money to Clark and his co-conspirators never received any lottery winnings. The DOJ said Clark pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud for his role in the scam on August 19. It said Shaw previously pleaded guilty to mail fraud in the U.S. District Court in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. In June 2017, he was sentenced to three years in prison, the DOJ said. Today's sentencing demonstrates the Justice Department's commitment to combating foreign-based lottery fraud schemes targeting American consumers, said Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General Brian M. Boyton, head of the DOJ's Civil Division. The perpetrators of these schemes will be prosecuted regardless of where they live and operate, he added. Acting Inspector in charge of the U.S. Postal Inspection Service, Miami Division, Quan A. Vargas, said the Postal Inspection Service will continue to actively investigate fraudulent lottery schemes based in Jamaica directed at the fleecing victims in the United States. We will not allow the fraudsters responsible for these Jamaican lottery scams to use the U.S. mail to commit their crime, he said. The DOJ said its Office of International Affairs worked with law enforcement partners in Jamaica to secure the arrest and extradition of Clark. JC of struggling to find a suitable young recruit, says SSB Josephs. Senior Superintendent Wayne Josephs, head of the West Summerland Police Division, says the Jamaica Constabulary Force is having a challenge finding suitable young people to enlist among its ranks. He shared that position while addressing participants during a peace march in the parish capital, Savannah Lamar, on Thursday. Right now, the JCF is on a large recruitment drive to get young people, men and women, to join up with the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and it has been a challenge so far, said Josephs. It is very challenging in getting persons to come. He acknowledged that some people might not be aware of the various recruitment drives and appealed to citizens to assist the police to build out its capacity by sharing such information with their neighbors. If you know of any young men and women who want to join the JCF, encourage them to come forward, Joseph said, during the peace march, 
which was led by the West Maryland Neighborhood Watch Council, the umbrella community-based organization for all neighborhood watch groups in the parish. Please, I am appealing to the public to assist us with our recruitment drive going forward because we want to improve and increase the capacity of the force, he pleaded. It is not just in Savannah Lamar, it is right across the island, the senior cop explained. Encourage them to go to the police stations and to check it out because we need decent young men and women to enhance the capacity of the JCF. In an effort to help achieve its target of enrolling 1,300 new cops this year, the JCF has turned to high schools where recruitment drives have already been conducted in Westmoreland, Clarendon, St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Trelawney, St. Mary, and St. Anne. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson advised that during a recent stakeholders meeting in Westmoreland that anyone who has the intention to serve in the police force must be fit and proper and they should be able to pass a polygraph test. Cubs seek man accused of raping 14-year-old girl in Clarendon. The main Penn police in Clarendon are searching for a man accused of raping a 14-year-old girl. The man reportedly sexually assaulted the child, a student of a popular high school in the parish, after she went to give him something. They lived in the same yard but in different houses. Police said that about 2 p.m. last Monday, the girl went to hand over a key to the suspect. He reportedly held onto her hand, pulled her into his room, pushed her onto his bed, pulled up her blouse and sucked her breast. He then pulled on her shorts and underwear and raped her. Police said the man heard someone in the yard near his room talking and stopped. The child then managed to run out of the room and told her mother what happened. The student was medically examined at the Mapen Hospital and police visited the man's home, but he was not found. They have since been searching for him, but to no avail. Man wanted for beating his child's mother shot dead by police. Police have cleared up an assaulted case posthumously after a man killed in a shootout was fingered as the accused. Adane McKenzie, also known as Santana Boy, Bad Rebel and Santi, was said to be the one who assaulted a woman in Gimimibit District in Milk River, Clarendon, earlier this year. A warrant had been issued for McKenzie, 32, charging him with assault occasioning bodily harm. It was reported that about 4 p.m. on March 15, 2022, Mackenzie attacked a woman with whom he shares a two-year-old child and beat her mercilessly. The woman was punched and kicked all over the body, causing swelling and bruises, especially to her hands and face. She had to be assisted to the hospital by residents after the beating, the police said. A report was eventually made to the authorities, but Mackenzie had fled the area. Last Saturday, Mackenzie was fatally shot when he allegedly engaged the police in a shootout in Rocky Point, Clarendon. A firearm was recovered in that incident. The police said that on Tuesday, the woman positively identified Mackenzie as the person who assaulted her. As a result, a warrant previously issued for Mackenzie was executed and the case of assault cleared. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.